Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What is suffering? And why do we as human beings suffer? If we were to analyze it, we will see that suffering is a psychological response to a state that we deem as uncomfortable or incompatible or unconducive to human existence. As human beings, we have an ideal in our minds of how we ought to be within our existence that constitutes a blissful state and a comfortable state. Anything less than that procures or may procure a psychological reaction that then constitutes suffering, one of displeasure or one of discomfort. Now, if we look at it carefully, if it is a psychological response to a situation that we deem as less than befitting, then that means immediately it is relativistic. Let us explain this a little bit further. Take an example of a few people who are on board a plane and the plane hits turbulence to the extent that they fear for their lives. Now, having said that, there are some people who don't understand that they are in danger, whereas others understand that they are in danger. So let us take this scenario. That on board a plane is a little infant who begins to cry when the plane shakes violently. Here it can be said that the child is suffering, but the child does not know the meaning of danger or the imminent death that awaits. So here to say that the child is suffering is a judgment made by the onlooker. But the child is only offering an instinctive reaction to the situation and doesn't understand the meaning of suffering. The child is feeling uncomfortable with being shaken. But the parent makes a judgment that the child is suffering. And as a result, the parent begins to suffer. So the uncomfortable state of the child causes the parent suffering. And that is the parent's psychological response. On the other hand, if you look at the state of the parent aboard that plane, they are looking at their child, the physical discomfort of the child, which causes them suffering. And in addition to that, they are seeing that the child's life will be snatched away. And that causes them immense sorrow and pain. And they suffer as a result of the sorrow and pain at the thought that the child will lose its life so prematurely. Then you have the parent themselves, who if they are able to detach themselves from the pain that they feel due to their child's state, and they begin to see the end of their lives, and they are caught with fear, then that is their own psychological response to the situation. And then they are suffering in addition to the suffering that they incur due to witnessing their own child. Then you have a young aspiring person who is on the plane, looking forward to a whole life ahead of him, who suddenly feels the turbulence of the plane. And, the, and here's the announcement that impact is imminent. Here, the danger that they perceive causes fear, anxiety, and panic. And that young man is suffering. Then you have a person who is suicidal and who dreads getting to the destination because they will be, let us say, named and shamed by the press. For them, their life to end would be a better option than to land. And on top of that, they do not have the ability to commit suicide because they are afraid of committing suicide, but nonetheless welcome the prospect of death. Let us say it's a Muslim person who understands suicide as the greatest sin and crime. So for such a person to die not of their own cause would be a huge welcome. That person's suffering would be a bit different, maybe, 
they would weigh out the option and say, you know what, this is not too bad. And then you have a person who is, let us say, intoxicated, who is just sitting there with a smile, doesn't really understand what is happening. The danger is real for them as well, but there is no panic. They can't register what is happening. If we look at it that way, we will see that suffering is a psychological response to a state that is deemed less than comfortable or blissful. Now, why do we suffer as human beings? The simple answer to this is that we as human beings are creatures who in essence are from a world that is of permanence. We are in essence not creatures that undergo change. And we are caught up in a body that of necessity goes through change. The world is one of dynamism, of constant generation and decay. There is nothing but change in the material world. It is always moving. And that motion creates constant change. Change in status, change in the body, change in the youthfulness and old age, sickness and health, societal change, status change, so on and so forth. It's nothing but change. Now, for a permanent entity to have a bodily experience can become very, very traumatic because the permanent entity forgets that it is not the body. We assume that we are the body. And inshallah, we will discuss this a little later on in a few days' time. That we are like people who have walked into a flight simulator and have forgotten that we are inside a machinery. If we could only become mindful that we are in, inside a machinery, the experience, the turbulent experience of life and this world would become a challenge for us to grow through. As opposed to us thinking that we are these bodies and suffering with these bodies and the change of state of this, with these bodies, we will know that actually no, the body is undergoing change. The body is feeling pain and I am experiencing pain through the mediation of the body, but I am not the body. As Allah says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسِمْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Indeed, we shall test you with the decrease of or with something of fear and hunger and the diminishing of wealth and of life. But in that, give good tidings to those who state that indeed we are Allah's and we return to Allah. This verse in itself depicts that there will be change of status. There will be suffering. But if a person awakens in the process of those suffering and says, indeed, we are belonging to Allah, we are returning to Allah, becomes mindful and awakens through this turbulent course of life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they've acquired their stability and they are steadily progressing to God leaving behind the changing circumstances of this world. And upon them, Allah says, are the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the greatest part of suffering is caused through attachments and expectations. And when these attachments break, we find a lot of pain within us. And when we have failed expectations of others, that causes a lot of suffering and pain and discomfort to the soul. Here again, if we can remind ourselves that these attachments are bodily attachments, these expectations are unrealistic expectations from the bodies, then in that case we can be far more mature and begin to understand that the severing of this attachment is only there to remind me that I have a singular calling and that is my God to whom and with whom I belong.
And when we have expectations of the others, if we can understand that we are not body or bodily, we can immediately understand that the expectation from the other ought to be for the sake of giving the other growth and as opposed to becoming disappointed and paining from within and ruining the experience of life, we will quickly find another way to bring the other to the fullness of their existence. If we can understand that, then life becomes a very meaningful and a productive venture. If we could just step back a little within ourselves and understand the nature of suffering, that suffering is due to the bodily aspect and I am not the body, I am a permanent entity who has been caught up in the body, then the sufferings will be minimized because we will not be offering those psychological responses. God says, indeed, with hardship is ease or after hardship is ease. This is in order to console us, that permanent being, that your body or the bodily conditions are undergoing hardship, but soon there will be ease. You don't have to worry. You are a permanent feature. Or when God says in the Quran that there is no tribulation that befalls the earth or your souls, but that it is within a book before that it, but that it was prescribed within the book before the earth was initiated or created, so that you may not rejoice at what comes to you, nor you may grieve at what leaves you. In other words, you should not suffer nor become overjoyed. These are the functions and properties of the body. You are a stable substance. So now we ask, well, why should a stable essence undergo such turbulent course of life? The answer is actually quite simple. That since we have this tendency of forgetting who we are, the turbulence of this world and of life is there to awaken us from within that you are not this, you are something else. Awaken to your real self and awaken to your real purpose. So it is an awakener. So the question comes that after awakening, then what do we do? Well, as soon as we awaken, then we seek out the answers of our existence and our objective and begin to realize that. Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Indeed, we have created human beings in difficulties. The creation is of difficulty. The human being is within that difficult creation. The human being's life, in essence, experiences difficulties through the creation of the body. And the human being is supposed to awaken through that difficulty and supposed to fulfill its journey or his journey through the turbulent course of life. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.